All right, so there's these um, intro to snap slides that I'm going to link to in the description. I'm not going to walk through them, but I am going to go through a lot of similar topics. So basically the layout of snap, uh, kind of helpful background so you can see where pixel locations are, some basic control and pen blocks, and uh, as well as some movement. And then we're going to kind of draw some shapes and so on. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is open a new tab. I'm going to Google, I'll just type it in here, snap programming. I went to the top. All right, now I'm going to click on this website and click run snap. All right, so now that I'm in here, right, I can log in or not. I would suggest always logging in so you're not going to lose anything. So I'm going to log in. I used a clear login, which is my full name. And then I've got my super secret password. Okay, so now what we're going to do is first change the background. So over here in the bottom right is where you select whether you're cha making changes for your game objects or sprites or down here on the background. So I'm going to click on stage, which is my only background. And I'm going to go up to file and I'm going to import some already made backgrounds. Okay, now if I click on sprite and I go up there, it's going to be called costumes because I'm selecting a different object. And so there are different options for that object. Notice also that the movement blocks that are blue over here are very different for a sprite. And when I click on stage, you cannot move the background. So there's nothing there. It's totally blank. All right, so anyways, I'm going to click on my stage. I'm going to go up here to the file, and I'm going to select a pre-made background. There are some nice ones there. I'm going to use the XY grid and click Import. So that gives me over here this nice grid, which I can make it full screen. And you can see that by default, you have 240 pixels from the center 00, zero over to the right. So just like a graph in math, 240 pixels positive or 240 pixels negative. And then you go up 180 and down 180. If you want to resize the stage, you can. I wouldn't recommend it at the beginning because then my instructions and your projects may not match. But absolutely, as we start creating our own larger projects in like week two and three, feel free to change it. So you can go up here to stage size and you can change the stage to thousands of pixels. Uh, but this is just the starting 480 wide and 360 tall with a zero zero right in the middle. Okay, so now I'm going to click on my sprite. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to choose a costume for my sprite instead of the default turtle area. Okay, so I'm going to maybe do, yeah, sure, let's do Alonzo. Okay, so there's Alonzo. Um, I could also do different costumes if I want. Notice now that I, I'm not looking at the place where I can create scripts anymore. What's going on? Well, in the middle area, there's three tabs, okay? There's the scripts that you'll write for the character. That's the actual coding you'll do that you'll drag in from the left. And then there's the costumes, which you can have a lot of different costumes, right? I could go up here and say, actually, you know, I want this uh, person to also be Abby A. You can just double click Abby B, Abby C, Abby D. Uh, also an airplane, so it can change between. Oh, whoops, I imported it twice. So I can just right click and delete that one. And so then I could change costumes. It looks like Abby's doing stuff, right? Because that's what animation is. It's just changing position of what you see or changing its rotation or size. And those changes into your eyeballs and your brain make it look like stuff's happening. All right. So going back to some actual scripting now. So I've now set up a picture for my stage, a picture for my object. Now let's do some basic scripts, okay? So I'm going to leave it on um, Abby there. So the... Up here are the different categories. We're going to start with control, which tells code when to start or stop or repeat under what conditions those things happen. It controls the flow of your code. Should I pause here and then loop back and then go forward and then repeat five times? So those sorts of blocks fall under these um, yellowish orange category. And then this darker blue is motion. So that's going to tell you point over here. Walk forward five steps, teleport backwards, now slide to the side, now spin in a circle. So all of those where you're pointing and where you're moving happen in this dark blue. You also down here um, can always check what your position is, so your X and Y position and your direction. Uh, those are useful to use. Uh, and then finally, we have the pen block. So we're only going to use these three today. So the pen blocks is just how to draw lines, okay? So what I could do 
Um, just to start is I could say when I click the green flag, okay, so that's up here in the right, that's a start my program. So right away, what I can do is I could clear all the lines of the pen that came before and put the pen down. So, you know, kind of that's the analogy of you're holding a pen, you put it down on the paper. Now, if you move your hand, it draws lines, right? Whereas if my pen is up in the air and I move my hand, it doesn't draw any lines on the paper because it's not touching. So I'm going to clear everything. I'm going to put my pen down and then I'm just going to move a little, right? So I don't know. At first, I could say, let's just uh, move I don't know, 100 steps, and then let's turn, I don't know, 90 degrees. And I just want to keep doing that. So let's put that um, right here under, I don't know, let's repeat that a couple times. Uh, if I repeat it four times, I'll get a square. If I repeat it 10 times, I'll just keep going over that square. That's fine with me, so let's do it. So I can either click on the code itself, even if this didn't have a control block, if I click on code, it actually does the code, right? It's a way to test your code. However, we don't want that to happen. Instead, we want to be able to control when that happens. So I could really quickly say, you know what? I don't want Abby to be upside down and over there. So what I could say is right at the beginning, and it's helpful never to make assumptions about your code. Like I assume she's going to be in the middle. She's going to be pointing in a direction. Instead, always at the beginning of your code, anything you're going to change, like I'm going to change movement, so at the beginning, I want to reset movement. I'm going to do stuff with the pen, so I want to clear the pen. I'm also changing direction, so at the beginning, I want to point in direction. So now, every single thing I've changed, oh, except for pen down, I would want to, at the end, pick my pen up, right? So now, every single thing I've done, I've reset. So my program can effectively run again the next time. So let's reconnect these. So this is just my setup, those first three. And then what I actually do, put the pen down, draw a square. Maybe let's just do it four times. So she ends up right back where we wanted. So now I'm going to click it. This, And if I just did those first things, boom, reset. Oh, look at that line, right? Because I didn't have the pen up on my last block, and it's still running my old one. So now let's pick this up, and boom, reset, draw a square. Okay, now let's do something a little more different, right? So let's... uh. Let's also maybe, I don't know, let's change the, oh, let's set the pen size. Oh, that's not the size. Sorry, set the pen size right here. Uh, this is to set the other pen options. So the different, the hue, saturation, brightness, transparency. Um, ooh, let's set the transparency, okay, to 50, sure. And then uh, let's see, what else should we do? Uh, let's set the pen color. So the size, instead of one, let's have it be like, I don't know, six pixels wide. Let's set the color to a, a nice orange. No, no, let's, no, let's go green, okay? And transparency at 50. Oh, let's even do a size of 10, okay? And let's do a bigger square. Let's say now it's 150 that we're going to do. So now let's click on this green flag. Boom, look at that beautiful square. Okay, now if I wanted to, I could click on the stage and say, I don't need those pixels behind me anymore. So I'm going to go to the background, and I'm going to change it back to empty. So I still have that grid that I could always switch back to, um, but I just want it to be empty so I can see this, right? Um, and then I'm going to go to um, my sprite, and I'm going to call this, and this is where you name an object, is up here. I'm going to call this uh, an airplane which is not a good name for Abby. So I'm going to go into the costume and I'm going to change it to airplane. Okay. And now I'm thinking, I don't want to start here and draw the square in the bottom right. Instead, I'm going to start up kind of in the left, upper left corner. So remember, negative, two, four, whoops, negative 240 would go all the way to the left and positive 180. That would take me up here to the top left corner, but I want to be in the screen. I don't want to be out of the screen. So maybe let's say, I don't know, negative 200 and positive, um, I don't know, 150. Let's say about that. And then let's go all the way across the screen. So we're at negative 200. We want to go to positive 200. We wanna, let's say like a, a 300 step square. Let's see what this looks like. Ready? Boom. Oh, that's much better. But ooh, my airplane's like out of the screen. So let's play with that. Let's say uh, actually we're just going to go negative 150. 
that'll center the square, right? So out of the 300 steps, we'll have negative 150 on the left going to zero and 150 on the right. So let's try that. Oh yeah, this is looking much better. Okay, um, you can play around with this stuff as much as you want. Again, different control blocks. So for example, maybe I don't do it when, or let's leave that. I'm gonna right click and duplicate. And I'm going to have all this reset stuff fall under a different block. So instead, I'm going to say whenever I am clicked, and I is representing whatever is being coded for. So that's my un airplane. And so now if I click on my airplane, kadoosh, and then I click draw, and then I go, hey, airplane, reset. And then, uh, or maybe, I don't know, let's say when the airplane's clicked, I'm going to jump over to uh, looks, you can actually say something. Uh, so maybe you say, ouch, stop that. Okay. So now if I click on it, he goes, hey, oh, bang. Okay. Let's even do it for shorter so I can click on him more. Ready? Boom, ba, choo, bang, ba, boom, bang. Right. So that's a when I'm clicked. So that's when you click the object. Again, you can always run code by just clicking on it like that. Uh, over here, I could also go to control and I could say when space key is pressed, um, maybe, I don't know, let's just do like something similar to this. Let's just duplicate this and put this down here. Oh, let's, let's grab the pen down also. Okay, so uh, when I press the space bar, he's going to put the pen down and just immediately run 10 thousand steps no turn just pchew out of the screen uh, you can absolutely have your objects be at locations that are far out of the stage that's totally okay it, this is like a camera um, this stage is like a camera only showing these pixels but the computer will keep track of everything that's outside there so ready so i'm going to start this program wow that's nice and then i'm going to press space key ready set pchew look at him he just raced off the line but i can always just click this green flag he resets his position draws his square oh notice that didn't erase um wait that should have erased why didn't that erase oh i just clicked it a second time and it did okay oh it was because when i press space bar i did not pick the pen back up so when i press the green flag he had to first run back into the screen and then start that was why okay so it's because i cleared the screen right before right here i cleared the screen so there's no lines and then i said go to so he ran back home and that's when he drew that second line ah see we can figure this out you often think it must be a glitch with snap i'm so perfect it's snap's fault but it's usually the programmer's fault and that's one of the beautiful things about programming is it does exactly what you tell it to do. And if there's a glitch, it's usually the programmer's fault and there's a way to catch it. There's a way to more elegantly catch that mistake. Uh, all right, so that was it for the first video. I just wanted to show you the basics of kind of the layout and how to do some basic programming with um, controls, movement, and pen. Now it's your job to just play with it and create some cool art, create some cool projects.